பிடிக்க பாருங்களா தானே இந்த கவர் இருக்கு பாருங்க ஃப்ரிட்ஜ் டோர்ல கீதா மேடம் உங்களுடைய வாய்ஸ் மியூட் பண்ணனும் ஓ ஐம் சாரி ஐ தாட் ஐ ஹவ் நாட் ஐ மியூட்டட் இட் மியூட் Okay now we have 45 participants online very good morning guys at the outset let me thank uh, once again the institute of company secretaries of india for this wonderful opportunity uh, to connect uh, during this lockdown time and also keeping ourselves abreast with uh, the latest uh, exam oriented uh, developments and uh, i must thank the efforts of uh, chalaya murugan as well as chitra anantaraman uh, both these officers has been doing uh, sarat you have to switch off your uh, video mute your video sarat sarat mute your video all of you please mute your video as well as audio and kindly be focused whatever you want to uh, communicate please communicate to me through the chat the entire proceeding is recorded and for your kind information this recording we are actually sending to the headquarters of the institute of company secretaries of india so therefore uh, kindly follow protocol kindly um, uh, act like a student i i repeat kindly be like a student and uh, try to emulate uh, the professionalism uh, which is inside you so thank you very much for uh, joining for this today's webinar let us start the program and uh, i what wherever i put a question for example uh, am i visible am i audible if i put a question like that please type in the chat box whether i am visible and am audible let me uh, try with uh, all the 50 of you and i want all of you to participate i repeat i want all of you to participate please put in the chat box am i visible and audible yes so only very few are putting i am uh, presuming that i am uh, visible and audible to all of you good now let me start with the <coughs> question now so is this question visible to all of you capital management yes let me see the chat box so is it visible now is it visible now working capital management no 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 let me let me let me open it take minute Uh, is this visible to all of you now yes sir very good so thank you very much now let's start this question 
Uh, we'll just uh, go a little bit faster or maybe whatever. Uh, uh, I am I'm not going to do question on uh, working capital management. I repeat, I'm not going to do question on working capital management. So guys, uh, uh, I'll be sharing with you three multiple choice question set. One on cash, one on uh, inventory, another on uh, debtors. So now we'll start with uh, debtors here. Let me read the question now. Okay. Good. So all of you are very, are very much ready. Thank you very much for that. So, uh, uh, good. I'm able to see the answers now. Good. So five C's of credit. Uh, I want to sh first share with you all of you that um, in debtors management, uh, before you give credit, uh, I repeat, before you give credit, somebody walks in and uh, asks you uh, credit, okay, can I take uh, uh, the inventory today and at the end of the day or end of the week uh, or end of the month, I'll settle it to you. Is there any uh, criteria to give credit? Actually, there are criteria to give credit and uh, there are five C's. Uh, which uh, you have to consider to give credit. And uh, what are those five C's? The first one is um, character. I repeat, uh, character. I repeat the word character. So here the character doesn't mean uh, the financial character. It means, uh, sorry, it doesn't mean the personal character. It means the financial character. Second is collateral. The collateral means... Uh, it can be anything, for example, a deposit of 10,000 rupees and then you take the stock. So that is a collateral. And sometimes uh, his, uh, generally there will be a support in the form of a deposit which will be refundable. Non-refundable deposit is also there, but generally there will be a refundable deposit. So that's what we call it as collateral. Third is condition. There will be a five, six conditions or just two or three conditions. Number one non-refundable. Number two, uh, it has to be paid within 45 days, 30 days and uh, discount uh, terms will be there. So like that, there are five C's are there. And uh, in this question, or whatever I mentioned, it is already there. So therefore, one D is the answer because none of the above. Good. Now let's move to the next question. Which of the following is not an element of credit policy? I repeat, which of the following is not an element of credit policy? Credit terms, collection policy, cash discount terms, sales price. Now, what is a credit policy? How much uh, credit has to be extended? Meaning how much money in terms of credit has to be extended, which will be paid later. For example, the time. Number two, the quantum. Maximum up to 50,000, maximum up to 5 lakhs. So these are all called credit policy. Now time here refers to when he will return it back. So generally this credit terms will be sometimes uh, it will be called as 2 by 10 net 30. This is a universal uh, global term. 2 by 10 net 30 means within 10 days if he makes a payment a 2% discount. 30 days is the net, net 30 means 30 days credit. 2 by 10 means 2% discount within a period of 10 days. So that's what we call it as credit terms. What do you think uh, out of this 2 A, B, C, D which is not an element of credit policy? 2, 2 D. Cash discount terms will be there. Just now I mentioned. So therefore, 2D is the answer. Good. Aging schedule. All of you know what an aging schedule is. Aging schedule means uh, uh, generally credit terms and credit period and collection period. Both are not same. I repeat. Credit terms is uh, 2 by 10 net 30. That's called credit terms. Credit period is called 30 days. That's called credit period. What is called collection period? Sometimes credit will be given 30 days. But collection will take 42 days. 60 days. 90 days, 110 days, 300 days, 400 days, 3 years. So that's called collection period. So aging schedule incorporates a relationship between credit terms and days outstanding, debtors and days outstanding, average age of debtors, average age of all employees, which will be the right to one. Credit terms and days outstanding, definitely it will not be there. So answer is never 3A. I have given you a very close answer. So answer is 3B. Very good. Correct. So I want all of you to please participate. Okay. Good. 
3 d is not the answer good now banded cost is not borne by factor in case of uh, friends uh, please understand uh, that in debtors sir uh, there will be bad debt 5% 10% uh, people may not pay now if that is the scenario i repeat if that is the scenario so uh, bad debt uh, has to be it is a cost actually will be borne by the respective company so by looking at this uh, question can you just find out which will be the right answer bad debt cost is not borne by factor in case of now here there is a term called factor now if there is a 45 days collection period and 45 days my money is blocked i will go to bank i will pledge or i will actually make the i will give the list of debtors as a lien in response to a advance taken from the particular banker and this kind of debtor financing has now become a, a niche area of financing and uh, a new uh, lender or a new model of uh, or a new financial instrument has been developed it is called as a factor and factoring services is a very big business because people will uh, give a short term uh, funding okay 45 days take this money i will actually collect that money from the respective customer so that's called a factor and there are two types of factor one is without recourse factoring another is with recourse factoring without recourse means without recourse means once i have uh, surrendered or i have actually uh, uh, pledged the debtors based on which i have taken the loan the collection responsibility belongs to the factor the bad debt also belongs to the factor it is called without recourse now what is with recourse uh, risk he will not take he will only do the financing that's called uh, with with recourse without recourse with recourse means it is boomerang i have uh, he has lent money he will collect if collection is not possible i have to pay so that is called uh, with recourse it will come back to me without recourse means uh, it will not come back to me the moment i have borrowed money i have uh, the collection part is uh, risk is with the particular factor now please answer this question bad debt cost is not borne by factor in case of which is the right answer four bad debt cost is not borne by factor so with the recourse factoring okay so that's the answer so we are getting the answer here there is it the answer is b sorry answer is c without recourse factoring so how many of you are giving that answer 4b no 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 it is 4c with recourse okay so just now i said what bad debt cost if it is not borne by factor it is called with recourse it will come back to me recourse means it will come back to me good good now let's move to the fifth question i uh, look at fifth question which of the following is not a technique of receivable for management fund flow aging day sales outstanding collection matrix now collection matrix is also a technique of receivables management and uh, day sales outstanding dso that means uh, what is the total outstanding in rupees uh, and uh, day sales outstanding means uh, if the outstanding goes bigger and bigger make the volume is increasing it will be converted to how many days sales what is the per day sales now divide the outstanding divided by per day sales you will know what is the days sales outstanding it will be number of days so that means the lesser the days sales outstanding it means your turnover is much faster you are very very quick in collections so therefore dso collection matrix aging schedule all farming part of receivable management so which doesn't form part of receivable management four <coughs> i'm sorry five it is five not four fifth question five a five a very good all of you are giving the right answer good so good so which is not forming part of uh, then i'll just take you to another question okay ah uh, 
payment to creditors is a manifestation of cash held for. <clears throat> this quest, this part I have already discussed in uh, classroom also. All of you, it is there in the first point of uh, your um, time material also. John Maynard Keynes. The three motives of uh, holding cash. Payment to creditors, a manifestation of cash held by. So, <clears throat> transaction motive, precaution motive, speculation motive. These three I have already discussed uh, in classroom itself. So, I am sure you can answer this question. <coughs> you actually hold cash to pay creditors. What is the motive to hold cash to pay creditors? Is it transaction motive? Absolutely yes. So answer is 10A. Answer is 10A. Okay, 10D, no, not is 10D. Go 10A. Good. Now let me put another question. Ah, 11th the question is very important, interesting. Very important and interesting. All of you please watch. If the closing balance of receivables, that is closing balance of debtors, is less than the opening balance per month, then which one is true out of, uh, I repeat the question, closing balance of receivables is lesser than opening balance of receivables, then which one is true? So you have to be very careful, you have to be good in accounting. You know, opening balance plus sales, less collections will be your closing balance. Now, opening balance and closing balance is yes, compared. So now you have to only compare uh, receivables. <coughs> The moment it is receivables, does it relate to purchases or sales? It relates to sales. So therefore, answer is B and D. It is not A and C. So I have given you the answer. So I am sure you can tell me what the answer is. If the closing balance are receivable, closing balance is lesser than opening balance. Then which one is true out of uh, B and D? Collections are greater than sales. If more the collections, uh, less sales. And if uh, collections are less, sales are more. Collections are less, sales are more means naturally closing balance will be higher. Closing balance cannot be lower. So please understand from an accounting perspective in a T balance. Okay. So which is the answer now? 11B, correct. 11B is the answer. Questions are not visible. J, Kabilesh, is it visible to all of you guys? Is it visible? Am I visible? Good. Yes, sir. Very good. So, thank you very much. Uh, now, we now have how many guys online? So, we have 48 participants online. Okay, good. <clears throat> now, let me ask you another question. Ah, this is an arithmetic question. So, 3 for arithmetic question, let me ask. So, please look at 14th question. 80% of sales, 10 lakhs of a firm are on credit. It has a receivable turnover of 8. That is debtors turnover ratio 8. What is the average collection period? So, all of you use your calculator. And all of you know what is 80% uh, of sales is a credit. That means 8 lakhs. Good. Debtors turnover ratio. All of you know what the debtors turnover ratio formula is. Debtors turnover ratio is turnover will be on the top. Denominator will be debtors. So turnover by debtors. That is called uh, receivable turnover or debtors turnover ratio. It is 8. So uh, uh, you have to tell me uh, debtors. Uh, I mean sales divided by debtors. So Sales, credit sales. Credit sales is actually 80% of 10 lakhs. So it is 8 lakhs. And receivable turnover ratio is 8. That means debtors turnover ratio is 8. Debtors turnover ratio is credit sales divided by debtors. And credit sales is 8 lakhs. 8 lakhs divided by debtors is equal to 8 means debtors is 1 lakh. Oh, answer we got it 1 lakh. So answer is either A or B. Very good. And the average collection period is 360 days. What is the average debtors? So, if your debtors is uh, 1 lakh uh, and your uh, credits sales is 8 lakhs, uh, so 1 out of 8, 
one out of eight is your uh, collection period. So one eighth of three sixty, one eighth of three sixty is actually forty five. So therefore, fourteen A is the answer. Fourteen A, almost. Uh, okay, we. I need uh, people to participate. Okay, I know it. Everybody to participate. Okay, good. Then. So then we'll have one more question. Huh? Arithmetic. Ah, the same, almost similar question. It is a reverse question. So let me put it to all of you. If the sales is uh, 60 lakhs, average debtors are 15 lakhs. What is the receivable turnover? I already gave you the formula to you. So I need not explain again. So uh, we already know what is the debtors turnover ratio. It is sales divided by debtors. And uh, there is no cash or uh, credit uh, information given. So entire 60 lakhs, you take it as credit sales. So 60 lakhs divided by 15 lakhs. So that's your data turnover ratio. So what is the answer now? A, B, C, D. 18, A, very good. That's it. So Nagarajan, you must only type once here. So now let me ask uh, this same question. This is what I explained to you a little uh, uh, few minutes back. Okay. Cash discount term 3 by 50 net 40. I already explained to you what this means. 3 means percentage. So 3 percentage discount if payment is made within 15 days and net 40 means 40 days credit. That's the meaning of it. So which one actually fits this 17? A, B, C, D? Seventeen A, very good. Mm, that's seventeen A. That's nice of you. So let's take the last one more question. Okay. Ah. So which one is related to receivables management? Which of this term related to debtors management, receivable management? Cash budget, economic order quantity, aging schedule, all of the above, which is correct. EOQ relates to which uh, management of working capital? It relates to inventory management. So answer definitely is not B. Okay. So which is the answer now out of A, B and D? If uh, B is not the answer, all of the above is also not the answer. So B and D excluded. So I have helped you to, with respect to this question. So which is the right answer? 21? 21C is the right answer. Very good. Nagarajan, you have to only type once. Are you logging in from uh, three different uh, machine? Yen yeah, Nagarajan. Good. So that's a nice uh, one. Let me take the next topic now. Okay. We'll do the inventory now. Eight minute. Ah. So we now have uh, fifty two participants. Uh, Yes. Is it visible to all this? Uh, so what is the first question is all about? Please type it in your uh, first question is about uh, what? Yeah. 
Yes. <coughs> First question is about EOQ and this is about inventory. So EOQ is the quantity that minimizes what? Minimizes um, inventory cost, interest cost, safety stock and total ordering cost. So which is the right answer? And my dear friends, uh, unless and otherwise we have made uh, one, we have given one reading to the entire uh, subject, uh, answering these questions will be very difficult. Because you have to be very conceptually very strong and thorough with these uh, questions. So EOQ is a quantity that minimizes what? Minimizes total, total inventory cost, total ordering cost, total interest cost. So which is the right answer? So EOQ is a quantity that minimizes the total inventory cost. So that's the correct answer, not the total ordering cost. Because total inventory cost includes uh, your ordering cost, your carrying cost, and your um, material cost. Your material cost plus ordering cost plus carrying cost, so total inventory cost. So it will actually minimize uh, the entire uh, inventory cost. But technically, it is your uh, material cost will remain same. Your ordering cost and carrying cost alone will swing actually. Will swing. Uh, okay. Will swing. Uh, Based on your number of orders, uh, you are, for example, if the orders are very less, uh, ordering quantity will be less, but your uh, carrying cost will be very high. Because as the number of orders are less, quantity will be more. Second, uh, if your uh, number of orders are more, your uh, ordering cost will be high, but the, since the quantity will be less, the carrying cost will be less. So these two only will swing actually. And when both are same, we say it is an optimum cost. Technically, ordering cost plus carrying cost plus your uh, material cost is your total inventory cost. But your material cost will always remain same. Only these two will swing. And uh, EOQ is a quantity that will minimize, that means that will optimize, a, that will optimize both, that will optimize both uh, ordering cost and carrying cost. Look at this A, B, C, D. Do you have carrying cost here? No. Do you have the ordering cost? Yes. So answer is not 1B, it is 1A. So how many of you are given 1A? Let me see. This is actually a very tricky question. I'm sorry. Oh, 1A, Sinduja has given. Good. Amit Kandekar also has given. Good. <coughs> Then let me take you to another question. Ah, this is a very <coughs> important. Uh, interestingly, this is a accounting question also. If no information is available, third question. If no information is available, the general rule for valuation of stock. We know how, how many participants uh, we have. Fifty-six participants. Okay, good. If no information is available, the general rule for valuation of stock for balance sheet is what? If no information is available, the general rule for valuation of stock for balance sheet. This is an accounting question. So actually you will go for uh, your accounting standard 2, NDIS 2. So any, uh, do we see these terms there? Standard cost, realizable value, replacement cost, none. We only see historical cost because valuation of stock should be done based on your actual expenditure that has been made, what we call it as um, a thumb rule called the lowest of, I repeat, the lowest of book value, uh, lowest of purchase cost, okay, that will be there in book value or net realizable value. So if your book value is 10 and your realizable value is 12, uh, you have to anyhow book at 10 rupees only. But your market value has gone down because of COVID-19, Lockdown and stock is more post lock uh, down open. The old stock will be there. Nobody will be willing to buy that old stock. So your purchase cost is 10 rupees. So you sell at a very discount price, 5 rupees, 6 rupees. Then the 6 rupees is the net realizable value, which is lowest. So therefore, general rule for valuation of stock is historical cost or net realizable value, whichever is lower, because that is uh, not given here. Realizable value is given here. But uh, the rule should be 
either of this whichever is lower so which will be an ideal answer in this circumstances 3 a b c d 3b 3c 3c historical cost c historical cost historical cost is the right answer and uh, unless and otherwise the realizable value is lower then that we have another rule is that so first rule number 1 accounted historical cost rule number 2 in case realizable value is lesser than historical cost then realizable value so that is the second rule so your question should be framed in that manner then b will be the right answer good you have to be very careful with respect to the questions whenever uh, you deal with good now we will have one more question which is a very different question okay um ah <clears throat> uh, this we have already discussed just now i am sure you can answer this question for eight in the uoq model i have discussed this so i will not answer this question or i will explain this uoq will increase if order cost increases uoq will decrease if holding cost decreases eoq will increase if annual usage increases is this uh, question make you any sense what is eoq model economic order quantity economic order quantity will it increase if order cost increases will decrease if holding cost decreases eoq will decrease if annual usage increases which will be the right answer Eight, eight a. EOQ will increase if order cost increases. Eight a. EOQ will increase if order cost increases. If ordering cost goes up, uh, more the cost, more the number of orders, uh, or even the lesser the number of orders, or the number of orders based on which your order cost will go up. So, since the order cost is increasing. you have to reduce the number of orders so eoq will increase if order cost increases so since the order cost is high you will actually increase the quantity more thereby your ordering cost will come down i repeat please look at this uh, concept very clearly if holding cost decreases if holding cost decreases eoq will actually will increase then uh, buoyancy will come so therefore b is not an answer if annual usage increases annual usage and the eoq doesn't have any link at all so therefore c is not answer a is the only answer sir i'll call you by 11 sir i'll call you by Uh, that uh, value will be done. That is tomorrow. Tomorrow six p.m. Yes. Thanks. Right. Next question. Ah. Uh, ah. I think uh, we'll go for tenth question. ABC analysis. is useful for analyzing the inventories so what type of inventories uh, you will use abc analysis abc means always better controlled so you will have the high value items as a medium value items as b lower value items as c so classifying the inventory into three even in our kitchen also every house kitchen we will do this abc analysis so very uh, uh, the costly items and uh, items which is uh, of high calories it will be kept a um, uh, closed uh, items which is uh, very low value or uh, it will actually have a longer life uh, it will be kept open so it is there in every place whether it's kitchen or whether it's the factory so abc analysis now please tell me what's the right answer 10 abcd based on physical volume quality usage and value or volume abc analysis which will be the right answer 10b 
टेन डी टेन फिजिकल वॉल्यूम इज नॉट द राइट आंसर इट इज ओनली बेस्ड ऑन यूसेज एंड वैल्यू बोथ बेट बोथ बेस्ड ऑन यूसेज एंड वैल्यू विल बी द राइट आंसर गुड ना लुक एट लेवेंथ क्वेश्चन ऑल ऑफ यू सो वॉट इज द फॉर्मूला हियर so all of you know this formula so if annual requirement is a ordering cost is o so carrying cost is c then what is eoq naturally eoq will be uh, in square root uh, whichever is in square root is the answer so which is the answer 11 11b amit kandekar you have to read the study material okay good then next uh, we will have one more question inventory is generally valued at lower of Inventory is valued generally as lower of market price and uh, replacement cost. Ah, uh, just now we discussed this, so I will not answer this question. I will not discuss this at all. So, which is the right answer? So, twelve, twelve B C D, twelve A B C D. I already discussed this. Twelve B, very good. So, all of you have given the right answer. Good. So, just now I discussed this. So, very good. Very good. Ah. Uh, Now come for this. Ah, sure. Now fourteenth question. Very interesting question, guy. What is the cost of not carrying sufficient inventory? Um, very important question. Carrying cost is uh, carrying cost, holding cost, both are same. Holding an inventory in your godown, in your cupboard. The cost of holding the inventory or carrying the inventory is called carrying cost or holding cost. But what is the cost of not carrying the inventory? So definitely, answer is not A and B. It is either D or C. For example, uh, you go to a bookshop, you go and ask. Uh, so I want uh, cost accounting by Jain and Naran. So he goes and says, uh, "When book is not there, he says, 'Sorry, no book.' Uh, then you go to the next shop. There the inventory is there. You buy." So he has lost the customer, and therefore lost losing the customer is losing the profit on it. So therefore, cost of not carrying sufficient inventory is known as stock out cost. Okay, good. Which of the following is not a benefit of carrying inventories? <clears throat> Which is not a benefit of carrying inventory? You have to be very careful with this question. That means other three are the benefit of carrying inventory. Example. I'll give you one example, which is uh, uh, reducing carrying cost. This is a advantage of carrying inventory, because if you have the inventory, I repeat, if you have the inventory, what is not the benefit of carrying inventory? Okay, uh, maybe I'll discuss with um, avoiding production strategies. Fifteen D. What is production strategy? So production shortages. If you have the inventory, production will go on. For example, uh, we are in lockdown for the past twenty-one days. Now it has become forty days. Forty days every day in kitchen, the food is being prepared uh, without any break. How it is possible? Because of inventory in the kitchen. So therefore, avoiding production shortages, food shortages, avoiding food shortages, it is a benefit of carrying inventory. So therefore, D is not the answer. But uh, if you have inventory. There is a cost to it. So, price down is that every price down is that every. Please mute your audio. Which of the following is not a benefit of carrying inventory? So, if you have inventory, you will have carrying cost because you have to store it. You need a space. Everything you need. So, therefore, you have to carry the the, the carrying cost will be there. So, answer will be fifteen. No, no, no. Answer is neither A or B. Answer is actually uh, which of the following is not a benefit of carrying inventory? Reducing carrying cost is not a benefit of carrying inventory. It will uh, <coughs> your carrying cost will actually increase. Therefore, it is not a benefit. Avoiding last sale because of inventory you will avoid the last sale because people will come and buy. Reduction in ordering cost because you have more quantity ordering cost will be less. So A, B, D is benefit. Eh? C is not a benefit. So very tricky question. Fifteen is very tricky question. You have to understand the concept. Then only you can answer. Okay, good. Then, hey, wow. Then I think sixteenth uh, question you can answer. 
which of the following is not a standard method of inventory valuation which of the following is not a standard method of inventory valuation so hope all of you would have seen this fee for standard cost average pricing realizable value so which is not a standard method of inventory valuation 16 16 16 b d so many are people are giving FIFO is a method of inventory valuation. Standard cost is a method of inventory valuation. NRV is also a method of inventory valuation. Just know we understood all these things. Average pricing is not a method of inventory valuation. It's not a standard price. It's not a standard method. Okay. Good. So 16C is not a standard method. It's also a very tricky question. So that means all the three are the answer. Maybe one more question. Uh, Uh, we'll have a question here, 18th question. Uh, a firm has an ITR, inventory turnover ratio 6. All of you know what an inventory turnover ratio is. Cost of goods sold divided by closing, I mean average inventory. Uh, class of goods sold, cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. That is called 6. That is your uh, inventory turnover ratio. And cost of goods sold is 7.5 lakhs. Very good. So 7.5 lakhs divided by average inventory is 6. Otherwise, average inventory is equal to 7.5 lakhs divided by 6. So this is your uh, formula then better inventory management uh, the inventory turnover ratio is increased to 10 wow so that means uh, when your turnover ratio will be increased uh, uh, when your turnover ratio will be increased better inventory management inventory going up or coming down inventory coming down so this will result in uh, so now you have to give me the calculation what is 7 lakh 50 thousand by 6 uh, guys what is 7 lakh 50 thousand by 6, please tell me the answer. Ah, 1 lakh 25,000. Now, what is 7 lakh 50,000 by 10? What is 7 lakh 50,000 by 10? 75,000. So, what is the difference between 1 lakh 25,000 and 75,000? 50,000. Good. Now, I have given the answer. You tell me which is the right answer. So, is there an increase in inventory or a decrease in inventory? Is there an increase in inventory or a decrease in inventory? A, B, C, D. B, it is a decrease in inventory. From 1 lakh 25, it has become 75. So, therefore, it is decrease in inventory. Good. So, now then, what is the next question? What is economic order quantity? Cost of an order, cost of stock, reorder level, optimum order size. Is the right one? You already know the answer, everybody. So, 19. 19D, very good. So, 19D is the right answer. 19D, 19D is the right answer. Okay, right, good. What is economic order? Good. So, now, one more last one. Last. Uh, Eight minutes. Huh? Mm. Mm. Yeah, we have got this. Is it visible to all of you? Yeah. Now it is on cash. It is on cash. Good. Now I already discussed this uh, part. This question number two. Is it visible to all of you? Yes. Very good. So which of the following is not a motive to hold cash? Which of the following is not a motive to hold cash? We, I, we already know this. What is the motive to hold cash? Transaction motive, precaution motive, and the speculative motive. So, therefore, which will be the right answer here? 2, 2 A, B, C, D. 2 C is the right answer. Good. 2 C, capital investment. So, that is not a motive for holding cash. Cash is not for capital investment. Okay. Cash is for only three purposes. John Maynard Keynes, he has given that answer. Any of these three, three motives. 
transaction precautionary and speculative good now let me take you to the fourth question what is the difference between i think i will take you to your 11th standard 12th standard when you have done your uh, reconciliation difference between cash balance as per bank book and pass book may be due to difference between your bank balance as per your cash book and bank book huh? or pass book and cash book huh? may be due to overdraft float factoring none of the above so what is this uh, the difference between these two for example how will you do the reconciliation between your cash book and pass book huh? check issued huh? not presented in bank okay this is one one reason Okay, like that there will be many reasons. You have actually given check. Huh? That means in your cash book, the bank balance has come down. But the check is not presented for payment. Therefore, your passbook balance is very high. So, passbook balance is very high. Your bank, your cash book balance is low. So, that means, for example, in passbook, it is 15 lakhs. You have given a check for 8 lakhs. So, that your cash book has a balance of 7 lakhs. So, you say it is only 7 lakhs, but in bank it is 15 lakhs, is 8 lakhs more. This difference is called float. This is called float. So, people will actually, uh, this 8 lakhs is a very small number, but in a very big corporate, uh, these lakhs will be in crores, sometimes it will be hundreds of crores. So, even few hundred crores, uh, if you have the float for 4 or 5 days, uh, the interest saved will be in lakhs. Interest earned will be in lakhs. So, please understand this. Is called float. So the answer for uh, question number four is what is question number four answer? It is not overdraft here, yeah, it is actually float. Okay. So the answer difference between cash balance bank balance as well as cash book and passbook is due to float. Good. Now let me have the next question. Then uh, we'll have the last uh, 10 minutes. Huh? Maybe we'll take another five minutes and if required, we'll take some five minutes questions. Okay. Uh, we'll take question number six. The transaction model for holding cash is for what purpose? This is for safety purpose, daily operations, purchase of assets, payment of dividend, which is the right one. It is for daily operations, holding cash. That is for transaction motive. We said three motives transaction, precautionary, speculative. Transaction motive is for daily operations. Okay, not for the other thing. So 6B is the answer. Good. Similarly, next one. Um, ah, a very, very tricky question. 11th question is a very tricky question. Which of the following is not an objective of cash management? That means other three are objective of cash management. So you want to maximize cash balance, you want to minimize cash balance. You want to optimize cash balance, you want to have a zero cash balance. So, which is the right one? So, 11th question 11 A, B, C, D. Which is the right one? This question I asked in the question in the exam or in the, in the classroom itself. I asked which is the right uh, cash balance? Maximum cash balance, minimum cash balance, zero cash balance. Actually, all the three are wrong. The right objective for a cash management is optimum cash balance. It can be 40 lakhs, it can be 40,000, it can be 4,000. So, please understand this question. The objective of cash management is optimum cash balance. But optimum cash balance, company to company will differ. So, look at the question now. Which of the following is not an objective of a cash management? So, which of the, which is, which of the following is not an objective of cash management? So, the question has to be, all the three are not an objective of cash management. A, B and C is not an objective of cash management. So technically all three are the answer. The question should be, which of the following is an objective of cash management? So answer should be level C. Please note down this question as, which of the following is an objective of cash management? Okay. The question is very tricky. They have made a small uh, mistake in doing this. Okay, good. Oh, that is your, okay. maybe I'll take one more question. I'll take one more question. Ah. Ah. 
the last one marketable securities are primarily which of the securities are um, marketable securities equity preference fixed deposit short term debt investments so equity uh, can you market it quickly it is a long term equity preference fixed deposit all are long term short term debt investments only are marketable securities primarily so anything which is short term are marketable so that's all so friends i must uh, appreciate each and every one of you and uh, let me see who are there on the screen okay do we have uh, representatives from institute do we have whether we have uh, chitra madam or uh, murugan here no both of them are not there anyhow uh, thank you very much guys so have a great day the further classes will be announced uh, further classes will be announced and uh, one more point i want to share to all of you that is the chat box here this is chat box okay so uh, my entire uh, this questions uh, is available in uh, this blog 3spro.blogspot.com yesterday's question i have actually uploaded here today's question i'll upload in afternoon by 2 o'clock i'll upload okay, i have one more webinar by 12 o'clock so i'll upload it later so yesterday's question you can download it you can use it those who want the questions please type your answers for all your questions in the comment and uh, after getting sizable answers i will give the answer in a couple of days okay so let me see who are all giving the answers to me if you are giving me the answers i'll type the answer at the end of that particular uh, question paper upload itself in the comment box itself i'll give the answer okay thank you very much see you hello hello sir ah tomorrow tomorrow is class as usual at morning 10 uh, uh no yaar i i won't be the faculty i won't be the faculty i don't know who will be the faculty but classes will be there we have to wait okay, for okay. the announcement from the institute but anyhow uh, please watch this space and uh, you you have the number of uh, mr uh, murugan mr murugan's number is there with you yeah no sir can you tell me please ek minute ek i'll just uh, give his number murga ah right 9443 96311 yes i have given the number mr murgan mr c murgan so icsi webinar coordinator okay chennai so please call him he will be in a position to actually update you so he is the person who actually uh, uh, designs uh, the subject and the faculty so i was uh, allotted two days so uh, i could able to bring all the 40 plus uh, students to one particular platform i must appreciate each and every one of you advait amit anita shri anusha devineta ishwar Okay, so all of you guys, yeah. my dial just. Uh, each Sir, do you have any idea? We'll I... take uh, practical sums. What idea? And uh, numerical sums. Who will be take? No, you are. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Amit Khandekar, sir. From which place you are talking? Yeah, I am talking from you know Pune, Maharashtra. Oh, you are from Pune. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. Uh, some, you know, where I am, where I was doing uh, training, that sir shared me this link and said uh, attend FM classes. Okay. So I say, sir. Very good, very good. So you you have attended sir, Chennai classes or which place uh, you have attended classes? 
actually uh, i am under financial management and course of old syllabus so okay. I, i will not be appear for uh, you know objective system i will appear for you know broad question type so our best wishes are here we have all the new syllabus participants here but anyhow my best wishes to you uh, we'll have another uh, refresher crash course uh, which will be announced uh, in the month of uh, either end of april or first week of first week of may please call mr murugan and ask him to actually have a question uh, i mean have a program a uh, one day or two day crash course program okay thank you thank you very much okay okay sir definitely Amit. i will join okay bye 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 thank you, sir i am facing medical sums Thank you thank you guys thank you